Hey guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. Today, as you may or may not know, is my first autocross with my Honda Civic Type R. Now, I've done autocross before with my Honda Prelude, uh, but this was probably 15, not 15, 10 years ago. And uh, let's take a look here. This is the Prelude I did my autocrosses in. This is down in Florida for the most part, in Daytona. But today we're going to be doing it in the Type R and I wanted to show you guys how to prep your car for your first autocross. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see I've changed the brake pads to a different set of brake pads. These are actually Duralast Max brake pads from AutoZone. I just want to test them out. I don't recommend that you run these of course until uh, I run the full test to make sure that they are worthy or not. I'm guessing they're not going to be, I'm guessing they're going to be really good for the street, but I want to test them anyway, and I want to show you guys the original pads that came on the Type R. Here they are. They are Brembo brake pads, as you can see right there. Uh, and they have plenty of meat left actually, more than I expected, more than I thought, so uh, I'm still going to be using this. I'm probably going to put these back on for the track day on Thursday, and then I'm going to order some different set of brake pads. So in case you guys don't know, a little trick on the Type R is that the front brake pads are actually just 2017 and 2018 Subaru WRX STI brake pads. So they're the same exact brake pads uh, for these Brembo brakes. So in case you can't find any replacements, go ahead and uh, order the 2017 Subaru WRX STI front brake pads and it'll work 100% as you can see. They work just fine. Since I was doing the brake pads, I thought I might as well change the brake fluid as well. So I went ahead and uh, I got my turkey baster out. I took the brake fluid out of there, put it into this canister, and I have put in this fluid right here, Type 200. Now, uh, the Motul 600 uh, is basically comparable to this one. You know, you could do this one or the other one. I think the Motul is a little bit better, but since I use this on the BMW, I figured I'll use it on the Type R and see how it goes. We're going to be using this one for the autocross and the track day, so I'll let you guys know how it works. So I went ahead and took out uh, whatever brake fluid was there. It was already kind of looking not so good. And I'll be bleeding the brakes. I won't be able to show you guys in video because I'm in a rush. But I'll be bleeding the brakes to get all the old fluid out, put the new fluid in, cap it off, and we'll be all good to go. Now it's always good to inspect your rear brake pad because if you're not doing well back here, you're not going to do well at autocross. So I inspected it. Now if you don't remember, these are actually the very, very inexpensive, kind of cheap brake pads from, I believe, AutoZone or Auto Parts Store or Advanced Auto Parts. And uh, they are the same exact size as any 10th gen Civic. So you can go to any store, order up any 10th gen Civic brake pad and you can get yourself a brake pad that'll fit for the Type R. Uh, if you're going to be looking for performance, I recommend Hawk pads. They, uh, they, have, they have a huge selection for the 10th Gen Civics for the rears. So any kind of Hawk that you want, maybe the Hawk HPS if you're going to street drive it as well as track drive it, or a more aggressive DTC60, but that's only for track use. So uh, you know, make your choices uh, accordingly. I will be doing, of course, videos on how to properly change it, how to, bleed, how to bleed the brakes, and how to choose the correct brake pads as we go along. It's just that today is not enough time, and I wanted to shoot a little video on how to prep for your autocross. So let's keep going. Let's go ahead and step inside for a moment, and I want to show you guys my helmet. As you can see here, I've done track night already, you know, it's a couple years now. And uh, this helmet is a Snell SA 2015 helmet. And uh, you'll see a sticker right there indicating that. And that's the only helmet you'll need to go racing, to go autocrossing, to basically do whatever you want to do at the track. It's a very inexpensive helmet. I believe I paid 120 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link down below. Uh, it might be a little bit more expensive now, but I'll put a link down below so you could go on Amazon and go ahead and order this same helmet that I use. 
pretty comfortable, you know, a little bit heavy, but you're not really uh, paying for lightness, you're paying for functionality. And then you can see back here, I got myself a nice low profile jack. Let's go take a look at it. So in case you guys don't know, uh, this is actually my favorite all-time jack. I've used it for about four years now. It's my favorite. It's a Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh heavy-duty two-ton floor jack. And the reason I love it is because it's so low profile. It fits in all under all of my lowered cars. And it's really good. I think they've updated it a little bit. I'll put a link down below again uh, of this very jack. I love this thing. It's uh, around 150 bucks, I believe I paid for this. And it's worth every penny if you're gonna be doing any kind of work on your car, if you're ever gonna lift your car, this is the way to do it. However, the problem with this is that it's not very portable. It's extremely heavy. So I don't recommend you putting this in your car. In fact, I tried to put it in the Type R and it's just way too heavy and I don't wanna scratch anything up or destroy anything. So what I did is I went to Harbor Freight take a look and I got myself this Pittsburgh automotive 1.5 ton aluminum jack low profile and it seems to work really well I'm gonna open it up and uh, we're gonna be using that in case I need to at the autocross so that pretty much wraps it up guys thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys next time peace out